in Melbourne, Australia for LZ World Tour at Calder Park. Driving the Evil that I haven't driven in four years. We're gonna have a segment later in the video where I'll bring you guys up to speed on this thing. It's a freaking cool car and I've missed it very dearly. We are checking out the track for the first time. Uh, today's gonna be kind of like a light practice day before we get the driving in. I got my spicy new unit. I'm about to pile it and use all my third gear because I'm gonna need it. This is a straight. Yeah. It's not a corner. This is some speed we're gonna be gathering here. So uh, we'll drive through it with the Evo. We got some meetings this morning and talk through how the run show and event and stuff's gonna go. But uh, today should be a chill day. Bring you guys along for the ride and then we'll talk about the Evo a little bit later. All right, so in my car now, I got my new RB25 gearbox. I'm gonna be like, bah, brr, bah, brr, bah, brr. third gear. <laughs> <laughs> drop front wheel box here okay then all right it gets small so it's a third gear entry this is definitely second gear yeah so that's not bad Flick. front gear front box front wheels in this box okay <laughs> and then this one this corner so as we got it's like a little s-turn this is going to be a big straight to link yeah this will probably need to upshift back to third Around going in this box corner. come back over here dang look at our pretty ass wall that yeah. a lot of people are going to be dragging bumpers on that's oh yeah, sick. we're gonna be cooking into this boy. <laughs> and then you drop it in here. Yeah. This is gonna be cool. Long curve. Thank God I'm right-hand drive. Yeah, there's the relevant, <laughs> the relevant thing that I just said. I feel like I've never driven manual before sometimes. <laughs> That's how I felt when I got my super again. Yeah. What do you think, Khaleesi? I'm very excited. It's way smaller than I thought. Yeah. 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 That the, we, the like the extension at the end is gonna be interesting because we're gonna be losing a lot of speed on entry. That's gonna be fun. We're gonna be backing it in there. Um, but that upshift, I'm really, really, really happy that I've got the RB box because the SR gearbox, when you're making power and you're at RPM, it's so hard to go two, three smoothly. Mm -hmm. Before you'd have to like kind of game it and like throw a little bit of extra angle. So as the angle falls out, you have enough time to gracefully get it in and then you can get back on power again. Now I'm just gonna be like. Psh, 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 psh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I, was, I, I just drove the track. Can we run it backwards? Oh, I knew you were gonna Like, say switch this. everything. <laughs> we literally this Toronto like, over again. We literally, we literally <laughs> like, had this joke can we, earlier. Can, no, it was just a complete joke. Not, I'm not 400 mile an hour entry yeah. on the wall. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, yeah. we need to change yeah. absolutely everything right now. So if we do a double manji backwards entry onto the wall at fifth gear, and then if anyone survives, we just put a clip two just as a survival zone. Sounds good. That we're sounds doing wheel to wheel racing, that's <laughs> it. No yeah. drinking. Yeah. Yep. Actually, drag, yep, drag, drag racing. Drag racing. Yeah. That's right, the drag strip off the wall. You have to run a quarter mile time and then start drifting at <laughs> yeah. the end. Yeah. That'd be actually kind of fun. You're on to something there. Yeah. Yeah, well we drove it half 45 minutes here and then did a front main seal in the tunnel. Shit. So we had to swap the cars on the trailer. But it's sick, it's so quick too. Hell yeah, I can't wait to see it. So this is a rear wheel drive, Dandelion Yellow, Evo 5. The motors turn 90 degrees, turn into a drift car. It's gonna be on the track driving with us. How cool is that? Yeah. Tell me what engine this has, because I thought it was a 4G. So it's a Nissan CA18 DE plus T. Is it an original Evo? Nope. Nah, that's okay, a Lancer. So, so in Australia, man, boy. Got it. So it's a Lancer. Oh, stop to see you, Lancer. Yeah, we can bring it's ourselves to cut up an Evo. Yeah, good to see you again, bro. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it blew a front main seal on the way here. <laughs> it's so cool, though. That's I'm so excited serious, to see right? it on track. That's what happens yeah, when you yeah, put a crusty old CA inside a freaking without changing any of the seals, but yeah. we'll get it sorted. It looks the same as yeah, mine with the same turn down tip in there. Yeah. yeah. When I told you that I would give you an update on the yellow Evo 5. If you don't know this car, I was here for drifting. I believe it was my first or second trip with Luke Fink. This car popped up, I purchased it, and it's been stored for the past four years. A bit of a weird situation happened where something wrong in my brain made it think that it made sense to ship this engine over to the States when I blew up the engine my white Evo. I don't know why, but at the time maybe I didn't know what I was doing and thought that I needed an Evo 5 engine. Regardless, I had issues with customs and the engine couldn't leave Australia, so it wound up getting taken out of the car by my buddy Russ and put back in the car pretty much exactly as it was, except it has upgraded head studs now. So I can turn off the boost a little bit, but I'll give you a walk around in the car if you haven't seen videos on it before and kind of, kind of show you why this car's cool. Starters, my two biggest points of insecurities with this car. The hood's been repainted and it's even more obvious now that it's sat outside a bit and been faded. And then this rear door has been repainted one little spot here. And it's like way more obvious than it was when I first got the car. <laughs> the only two things that really drive me nuts about this thing, it's actually got low kilometers, 90,000 kilometers on it. Underneath the engine bay, it's pretty tasteful. 
Uh, it's got a aftermarket turbo, pretty ping valve cover, some little bolt-ons, but it's still stock bottom end. I don't know why, it's gotta be the cams in this thing. It is the most responsive and like fun Evo to drive, even though it doesn't make a lot of power. Some sweet carbon gannies, some forged wheels that I've never heard of, cool little carbon splitter, and probably my favorite part about this car, something that I've never seen before, this uh, diffuser that looks like it's made for the Evo. Um, I tried to get one similar for my white Evo, but it just like fits this bumper perfectly. Looks rad. Uh, and you might notice too, it doesn't have the duck bill like it had anymore. Uh, Luke was actually able to source the original wing for this car from the previous owner. Uh, so, looks cool. Uh, Biggest challenge I'm having is the car really needs a correction, like it needs to be polished. But I think I'm gonna send the car back to the States after this trip and you only have so much clear coat so my methodology has been i should probably leave it here how it is now that way if it gets messed up in shipping i only have to polish the car once i only need to cut the paint once yeah. and then i'm not taking away clear coat that i don't have but it's a cool car sounds good drives good got a little bit moldy from sitting in containers and stuff but a uh, good detail got it pretty good get it the rest of the way when i have some more time what do you think colette big big yellow evo fan Banana car so good. <laughs> oh, the paint. I, I want to polish it so bad. You can feel it. Oh, it just sounds like sandpaper. Yeah. It's going to be really satisfying to correct it. Just Great. means you can have fun with it here and not really worry too much. You're not wrong. Technically, I could have shipped this car over earlier this year, but I thought since we were coming to Australia anyway, I might as well get to enjoy it one more time over here. So that's the plan. One of the only cars I own that has the headliner done. Look, it's all black Alcantara. Yeah. It's pretty nice, right? I do like it. It's got Evo 8 seats, which are cool, but they're a little bit tall for me. So like my seating position's a little weird, uh, but the door panels are redone, headliner's redone. It's a neat car. Yeah. It's got a nice note to her. Not the fastest car on the block, but super zippy for like a bigger turbo. always being open drives me insane. <laughs> Whenever everyone drives my car back home, it's the same <laughs> Mike was all hyped up thinking that this was like a, a stance minivan. I mean, it is. And then I noticed the handbrake. It's a drift car, dude. Four-seater drift taxi van. I wonder, it's probably like, look, when we haven't seen the engine yet. When I get kids, this will be something. This will be, yep. When I, when I get some. Well, maybe when, get, when you get some. Yeah. Well, maybe when I get some, too, we'll turn them with the minivans. The day that Mike starts drifting, is the day that I lose my filmer. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> this is the coolest thing here. I love this. I love Australia. <laughs> I, w I was expecting like a K-Series turbo or something. Really? I didn't even think about the engines. I was just thinking about the kids. <laughs> There's about six kids in here. This is like, at first we thought it was just like a stance minivan. Then oh, we, no. Then we thought it was a drift car. <laughs> yeah, it is. under the hood, we're like, what the f <laughs> what uh, what's suspension? Yeah, the running? whole car is a 350Z four fan. Really? So it's a Z33. <laughs> You're welcome to skid it, man. Go nuts. But everything you see. So that's Z, Z stuff. Everything. Front to rear, whole floor pan, trans tunnel. Because they're front wheel drive standard. So is it a body swap then? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, full body swap. That's 130 mil longer in wheelbase than the Z33. So it probably drifts better. I don't know, you want to tell me? I'm not yeah. a great driver, but I build cars. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. what's, what's the uh, what's the retailer one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The rear of this car was so messed up that Luke actually sorted out when he had the car having a whole new rear cap welded on. So this whole line here, you see this cuts even up here, is basically a new rear like cut from the car. And uh, he was actually the one that was able to help source all the doors, the wing, the rear bumper, get all the panels repaired initially before it went to paint. So I just wanted to express a massive thank you to Luke again for looking after this car for four years. I wish more than anything he was here driving with us. It feels wrong being in Australia without him. Uh, but he's actually got a buddy of ours wedding back home that he's going to, so he couldn't make it out. But next time, we gotta have him here because you know he'd be doing all the gnarliest vacuums. Oh, yeah.
careful B-roll that Mike put of this car, because it's gonna look hammered by the time I'm done with it this weekend. Other cars, walls, birds, planes, it's not gonna look this nice. You can right now, it's so smooth, it's so soft, it's gonna look like a zebra with all the tires. Actually, there shouldn't be any tire stripes back here. <laughs> Actually, it should be other people's cars that have tire stripes, not mine. Yeah. Hopefully it actually doesn't look bad. <laughs> but I'm not going to drive like a because <laughs> mama didn't raise me. Mama, if you're watching this, I'd love that you didn't raise me to be a good, gearing feels good, power, I'd like to turn the boost a little bit, but we don't have a wide band sensor in the car right now, so I'm leaving that beat. The limiter is super weird, it's pulling a bunch of power up top, and fuel cut. Settings are not dialed in, so I called in the Link experts, Jimmy Oaks and Sama in a box from Japan, <laughs> who thankfully has his Link computer from Japan. There we go. Yeah. We're good, we're to play good. with my limiter settings. Shout out to uh, Lloyd for the SR limiter settings, my yeah. the man. Thanks Lloyd. have in the mid-range now um i only put six percent in it to, for a start okay it looks like the turbo is falling off naturally yeah which is fine on a setup like this i would usually just like like say you had like 70 percent up at redline mm -hmm. i would just put 70 percent everywhere let it fall over i just need the hit just so when i clutch kick in third gear it just wakes it up you know mm -hmm. can we do one two three yep
and we'll chill there. But fueling looks good and everything? Yeah. We're not out of injector? Not yet. Ready? <laughs> got it right we turned the boost up a little bit and fueling so like to be fair fueling was actually pretty good on the car it's just mid-range need a little bit more a little, a little more spice so feels really good now a little bit too good yeah i thought it did on purpose he goes oh that was an accident I was like, yeah well now i can add more grip because i have more mid-range i was scared to before yeah yeah but like we needed more grip so hell yeah that was good a bit and it's at the point where I am not going to be able to spin a tire and add any more grip and there's some fast cars out here which means I'm gonna need to boost up more so I can drop the pressure more um, so I'm gonna have to go go talk to Mr. Jimmy O and see if he'll he'll sort me out on that it's it's making 24 25 pounds I, I feel comfortable bringing up to 28 I run the car back home at like 30 32 and she she's all right and I know this is the Skevis racing motor for the Nitto prods she's so she be good one really cool car here is driven by one of our local guests, Dewey Bryant. If you're from the Australia scene, you know him. He makes a lot of cool sh Costal angle kits is his thing. Jason runs them on all his cars. But he's got some really neat stuff with his car. I want to show you guys a couple of things. My jaw was like on the floor at some of the sh this car yesterday. All right, Stewie, I want the, the top 10 coolest things on your car right now. All right, well, I think it probably starts with, uh, with the dual calipers. Um, the, the setup we do there, that's for the two-way handbrake. Um, but it's, it's part of my whole uh, costal steering setup, so it's looking a bit dirty now because we had a bit of blow by yesterday. We haven't filled it, but it's uh, it's an all billet, uh, fully adjustable uh, steering kit. Uh, massive, massive adjustment. 
but I have a I have a dual caliper provision for it. So the way we use that is we use it on a two-way handbrake, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, probably another weird thing is is these towers we made. Um, they're, they're a conversion tower that me and my dad built in our garage like, I don't know, 13 years ago. And then we've given it the modern touch with, uh, with these slide plates. So you can slide it back and forth and easily adjust caster and camber That's really whenever cool. you need. So uh, I guess the, the scream is probably pretty yeah. unique too. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I just thought, hell. So we just basically <laughs> made it to all different size chambers. Or yeah. different uh, dimension chambers. My, my favorite thing oh, is these yeah, guys so are here. I've got about, I've got these. So I was just building it, and we were like, "Oh, we're gonna find a place for the catch can and for the for the uh, overflow." And I was building the rat spool, and I thought, "Hey, why don't I just put some bungs, uh, put some uh, bungs in it, weld it in, and create a breather in the actual rat support?" So the rat support is the catch can. The rat support is the catch can, and, and well, you know, it's all still got a bash and stuff. So we're hoping. It, if it ended a crash, it never makes it to that. But if it does, it's probably the least of my worries. It's yeah. having to make a coke can, catch can. So, um, so we did the same for this side. It's really simple, and obviously it works. Um, it makes it really easy to drain every every time we need to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like I yeah, didn't, yeah. I didn't see the lines. I just saw the filters. Like, what the f is this guy doing with a yeah. filter on his rad support? <laughs> this is actually it floats inside. It's a three inch into a three and a half inch outlet. This floats in, it's not connected to this, and this is then connected to the engine. Okay. Um, you don't really get any exhaust flow back because it still wants to, 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 to leave. Yeah, and then the LT down the side, um, and then uh, we kind of, this was actually done a while ago to meet regulation. We had it just coming out the side, and, and one of the events was like, hang on, you can't have an exhaust that exits past the, uh, sorry, before the, uh, the front door. Yeah. So I was like, all right, so we extended it out. And <laughs> rock to the event, they're like, I guess it meets the regulation. <laughs> this was a battle car back in the day before they really took off. Um, you know, it's kind of started 2009 ish. And, uh, and it just was, you know, it, it, it just became what it was just from hard battling. It wasn't like smashing into walls and stuff as much at that point, but it was a lot of hard battling. So there's a lot of little dents. This chassis is actually surprisingly straight. Yeah. But, uh, when I, just, you know, when I kind of got the call up to this event, I was like, I, I can't. And even I talked to Jason and, and the guys, they're like, I mean, you can't fix it. Like, it has to be like this. Yeah. <laughs> and so we decided we're just going to make it, you know, put all the good gear in it, yeah. but leave the, the natural kind of dents and patines and stuff like that. So then, uh, yeah, so then we added the, the rock sliders we call down here. Um, so, so, so we, we did originally have it further back, and then I, you know, I, I pulled enough gearbox out of the track to be like, I, I don't want to be getting up there and get that top bolt stuff like that. So we just decided, just just go bigger, um, and make it as big as possible. We're not using the space on the inside. I don't have AC in there, so why not just make it as big as possible? It doesn't really interfere with anything on the inside. Why not go bigger? But essentially, you, you can configure these in a lot of different ways, but the way I've done it for, for this car is, is backwards. Uh, it's actually in line, so it's an inline uh, rear caliper, single caliper, and then forwards activates just uh, that dual caliper. Now, other cars like Jason's uh, wagon, he runs that in line, so it just taps into the brake line, the front brake lines, so it just only activates the front, but it's, you know, uses the, the, the standard caliper yeah. and a single caliper. But so mine cool. is, is done this way. I've just chucked a little bias in there um, just to kind of uh, reduce some of the feedback. But I don't mind the feedback on a on an inline setup. But uh, but yeah, so it's honestly amazing to use. Like when you don't have to like move your foot to left or brake, you just need a little bit of balance and, 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 and change or whatever. You can go from hand braking to just dab it forward. And the control is insane. Like because it's your hands, you just, lean up just a little bit and it gives you a tiny bit you lean more and it'll fully lock them up well it's I like crazy that you can leave your foot on the clutch ready to go exactly that's i think that was the hardest part to, exp to explain to people that didn't quite get it is for me I, I i like all the adjustments that come around having your foot over the clutch handbrake like feathering the throttle um feathering the clutch on and off and all those little adjustments so when i take that away i feel kind of naked with, with the techniques and like, oh, I can't do all those things that I want to do. So being able to hover that means I can instantly go between those and a little bit of left foot brake. And honestly, it's crazy intuitive how, how quickly you pick it up. It's, it's not, you don't have to relearn everything. A few times you, you just push forward on it and 
and you're like, oh, yep, it's easy. You just add into your to your kind of uh, techniques, and and you don't have to use it. it. Doesn't interfere. It doesn't take anything away. So you can just have it in for a few events. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but the car's actually got clean plates. It's uh, it's we we, we basically got it off defect uh, with dents. I went through inspection with dents. Not like this. It wasn't like this, but. The car met all the regulations and we got it through. Um, this was actually put on by a cop out at a, a, a track in the middle of nowhere. And uh, he came by and we were taking him out for drives and stuff like that. And he, he put that on. He actually wrote something on there. As a joke or like? Yeah, yeah, as a okay, joke. Okay. And, and it was so long ago, that the, all the little notes that he put on there, because he was, he put some jokes and stuff on the... They all faded away. Yeah, they got to put details in there, yeah. but it all faded off. Yeah. It sucks, but, um, but yeah, that's, the car's actually, Clean plates, funnily enough. <laughs> so I could register at any time I wanted. Well, I'm stoked you brought this thing out here. Yeah, cheers. Great driving, and uh, yeah, no, it's, this is really cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. I didn't uh, show this car at Jason's shop, but it's pretty cool. This is a Falcon with a JZX front end and a JZX rear end. Is it a uh, Mark? Nope, it's a Chaser rear end. Kind of cool. What do you think, Sam? It's weird, and I don't know why I love it so much. What does Akachan think about it? <laughs> So Agus, Skevis Racing that built the SR20, his buddy has a dyno and is going to help us get this thing dialed in. Um, Jimmy, you want to explain what's going on with the timing and why we're going to a dyno? Um, right, so when you're adjusting fueling, right, you could see that in wideband form. When you're adjusting timing, you can't really see the efficiency of power pickup because it's you, you can't feel 10 horsepower, you can't feel 20 horse, like at, at that level, you know what I mean? So a dyno will tell us if it's in the area where it likes to be or if it doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, that was an overcom- it, the dyno will tell us if it's doing good or not. Well, I've that's never, a first. I've never seen a wastegate spring fail. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, they're made different down under. Yeah. Oh, oh. Wait, what, what, what brand? Oh, it's, a, it's an old school Turbo Smart. Yeah, she's been in there for a long time. It's about 30 years old. Yeah, yeah, look. Hey, go on. You'll get down the big jobs. Oh, oh the new John. Oh, is it the same size? What's the, um... Hey, hey, I guess, how do you know if the oil's still good in it? Oh, hang on. If it's not higher than last time you checked it, Nah, viscosity is good, that's mint. <laughs> Alright, so we're here at Dr. Drift. Sam's got the car on the dyno. He's gonna do a baseline, see where it's at. We did find a couple little things that we tweaked, but we were gonna see still what it's making before we start playing with the tune. Add a little boost, add a little timing. See what you can make. The car is definitely a lot spicier now that it's got some timing. Oh, I see. A little bit more boost, but I think the biggest thing that we uncovered is the intercooler was actually a restriction. So, similar to the Datsun, once we changed the reference for the wastegate to the intake manifold, it actually held boost a lot better. Um, so, the car is making like 450 now, but it's not rolling over as hard as it was. I'm so tired. We gotta be up early tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a good day. Your car is sick. I still have an R200. Everything's great. Everything's fine. Yeah.